Hello and welcome along to my what's in the box review of the new release from Wingnuts kits, Wingnut Wings. This is the Fokker DV7, the early version. Uh, now this is a new release, uh, it's, it's, it's of an older kit, but they put a load more decals options in there. So you now get five different decaling sets in there. I'll go through those later on once we get into the, uh, the decal sheets. Um, as ever with Wingnuts kits, beautiful box art, absolutely lovely. Nearly good enough so you can cut out and frame these prints. Um, and that's one of the, I think, one of the real draws to the kits. Uh, so let's have a look what's inside. Now I'm gonna start off with the instructions. Uh, this is one of the main draws I find to the Wingnuts kits. The amount of information they give you in these instructions really, really helps you to build them and to produce a very good model. Uh, front cover gives you all the breakdown of what's, how the plane it was built, what wingspan, length, max speed, what it was, uh, who produced it, how when it was produced from, what it was armed with, and then gives you the, the history of the aircraft there. Now this, this is quite a good size, thick set of instructions in here. So let's have to open it up and have a little look through. You get your normal color breakdown. Now with wing nuts, you get a Tamir, Humbrol and the Federal Standard options. Um, unfortunately, it does mean you're gonna have to mix some colors with the Tamirs. That's not the worst thing in the world. Tamir are a good paint. You can mix them down with absolutely no problem at all. You do have the option of Humbrol, which will then be enamels. Some people still quite like using them. Most people would go for the, the uh, Tamir acrylics. Uh, here you get the parts breakdown of what you get in there. So you get in here, you get two lots for your wings. Uh, you get parts for your cowlings, propellers and engine the main fuselage and internal building for the cockpit, and then all the different options and pieces you can use in there. Uh, on this page there, it shows you the different, you get one, two, three, four decal sheets in this, and they're de big decal sheets, so we'll have a look at them in a, p in a minute. And there you get the photo etch. Uh, build up always starts with cockpits, whatever we, wherever we are, we're doing with planes. A uh, very simple layout shows you in two different colors of the parts that you're adding or put joining together so the pieces you've already previously built. Uh, gives you breakdowns of colors, of options. Uh, so that make, makes the layout quite easy. One thing with wing nuts, you've got to start noticing straight away is you've got to decide which one you're going to build as there's quite a few different options for colors or different parts or holes to drill. In there so you've got to read through these instructions before you can start building it and then choose your plane uh, moving on into the uh, cockpit there so you're using the side pieces little pieces to cut out of the frames can make these parts quite tricky to deal with but nothing uh, a seasoned modeler should have any problems with uh, moving on to more cockpit again adding the photo etch uh, adding the instrument dials placing them where they should be uh, and again, there's different options there for where certain specific parts sit to which model you're building. Uh, now what's the really good part in all wing nuts kits, if they have the ability to get photos of the real plane, they will put the pictures in there. So it saves you having to go hunting around on the internet for good quality pictures. Um, this one shows you the leather, the wood, the rigging, the inter and all the internal parts. So that really helps to get your model built. Uh, and then they give you a basic color breakdown, a basic color picture of what the final internal assembly should look like. So it gives you a good idea of the differences of colors. It might not be the simplest when you're looking in the first part. It can sometimes be a little confusing. So these pictures to refer back to are very, very handy. Uh, next build up, you're coming in onto the engine. Lots of ability to add a lot of detail on these. You then start putting the engine and the cockpit front area together. Then move on, on to joining the fuselage halves. Placing the cowlings, machine guns. 
Moving on to the exhaust and the different fairings on the side. So you have two options on this one. You either have the high exhaust or the low exhaust. So you can pick which type you want to use. Again, it depends which what version you're doing at the end to which exhaust you put on there. Uh, shows you joining the wings together, putting them inside the fuselage, doing the lower undercarriage. Tail section, putting the wing spars on. Put in some more photo etch for the machine guns, placing the top wheel, wing on and then doing the propeller. What this doesn't show in here is the position so when you start having to do the rigging. So what, I, what most likely people would do for these, once you've got to this point and into this section here, you then start adding all the rigging to the top wing. You then place the wing on and then you pull, pull all the rigging down to the lower points. Makes it a little, little easier. Or you can do it the other way around and you can put everything on the bottom wing and put it onto the fix it to the top wing. And um, those are two ways I've seen doing it, whichever you prefer for when you're building. Uh, now when it comes to rigging, this is one of the least amount of riggings I've seen on a wing nuts kit uh, so far for me. You have a very small amount which goes underneath the wheels there. And then you have some more that go inside which are the control wires for the ailerons and rudders on there um, so if you're looking to be one of your first wing nut kits uh, and you are scared of the rigging this is a perfect kit to start with absolutely perfect starter kit because you don't have to have all the scare rigging like the British versions did uh, and once again lots of different pictures of the original plane and then we move on to deco, deco options. Now, this comes with some absolutely wonderful options. Really, it's going to be hard to pick the one to build. Love the German lozenge pattern on these types of aircraft. They look really good. So you, this version you get, the lower wings have the lozenge covered, covered up, painted like a sky blue. They then have lozenge on the top panels. And then the main fuselage is, is an odd streaky brown and green type colouring. Very interesting that one. So with this option here we have the red and white scheme on that. We have blue tops, top wings, red nose, the streaky brown green down the sides and then the sky painted lozenge underneath. Next one up which I'm um, getting quite tempted with to do the finishing myself. So you have full lozenge top and lower wing, blue fuselage, and you have a choice of red nose or a yellow nose on there. That one's very, very tempting on there. On oh, the last ones there, uh, one more after this. This is a main, mainly blue body, body with lozenge top and lower wings uh, with a uh, canvasy green nose on there. And the last one, which is also very, very tempting is a black and white striped. So top wing, lower wing are black and white stripes and then you have lozenge on the two inner wings. Very nice. Uh, but then the main body is then all black and white stripes, uh, which would be interesting. There's no decals for that. So that would all have to be painted yourself. And the same with the top and upper wing. All you get is the crosses for the decals. Uh, and again, at the end there, some more wonderful real time art shots and that's all you get in the book so let's go on to the kit so let's move on to decal sheets you get four decal sheets in this kit and uh, now they they are cover the markings and the side paintings uh, which is quite different on this one so you get on this sheet here you get a brown and a green striped it looks like what it would be a paint wash which would have been painted down the side uh, I can imagine this would have been then to try and camouflage the planes while they would have been on the ground uh, to stop them being attacked uh, by roaming British aircraft. Um, as ever with wing nuts kits, these decals look amazingly thin, very detailed. Uh, they're done by Cartograph in Italy, so you can imagine these are going to be of very high quality. Lovely printing, very thin, absolutely perfect, just what you want. Uh, now, what is one of the big draws, I think, with the German aircraft is the lozenge pattern. 
So you get a full sheet here with upper and lower wings of different varying colours on that. Uh, again, perfectly printed, lovely and thin, absolutely wonderful. Next one again, this is on with more lozenge. Now this has the lower wing, which has the been painted over with like a sky blue to stop them being uh, attacked so easily when they're, from, when they're in the air from ground forces. And you've got the faded upper wing colors on there too. Absolutely wonderful. And then the last sheet are the main markings and then some of the last lozenge for the towel sections. Absolutely perfect, all perfect. Okay, moving along to what the plastic and the small photo etch get inside this kit. I'll start off with the photo etch. You get a small fret there. You get a wing nuts, wings badge with the Fokker DV7 uh, etched in there. You can make a small little plaque for that when you're displaying it. You get two machine gun heat guards on the top. You get the main seat belts and then the lap belts on there you get two machine gun sights and then you get a part which goes along the flash guard which is for the machine guns over the top of the engine nice small little fret there to go along with the model moving on to the plastic uh, i've taken all of the sprues out of the bags uh, they all do come individually wrapped not like a revel kit you which, which helps protect it when it's being shipped you get in a total one two three four five six seven eight sprues in there two of them are doubles which are the smaller sprues which contain the wheels um so going up we'll come along first of all is sprue e uh, and on this you get the engine and the propellers so in the kit you actually get four options for propellers on this so you've got to pay attention when you're doing your building so make sure you get them correct uh, you get your main engine, you get your rockers, uh, main engine block, this will be your sump on there, uh, main engine block again. Uh, what else have a little part, small, other small engine parts. You have a, what looks to be a sort of slide moulding uh, piece on the end there, as it's got the jumped gate. Um, rest of the details, very nice, very little flash evident on any of the parts on this, uh, nice details well laid out uh, looks to be easy to remove there's quite short, small gates on there so you won't have too much problems uh, on a lot of the smaller parts you can just make out here you have little extra injector pin marks well not sorry not injector pin marks you have ex extra injector pins molded onto them so it saves the part having to be ejected and having a stamp on them which is a good idea it saves your part being uh, damaged at the back with a, that injector mark so all you've got to do is have to remove an extra little piece on some of the smaller pieces, which isn't shouldn't be too much of a problem at all as they're very small gates again on them. So that's your sprue E. Moving along. Uh, now this is the sprue D. Now you get two of these sprues. I'll show you the one because they're duplicates of each other. You get your wheels and you get stuck in some of your spars on there. And these for the top of the wings, ailerons. Um, and then we've got two different types of machine guns on the side there. Um, what is a shame, which I've noticed on these wing nut kits, is uh, you get no slide moulding technology on the barrel flash ends. So you're going to have to drill, drill them out and uh, be careful with them doing them yourself. I think, which I think is a little bit of a shame that they haven't gone uh, into that. I've even got some of their more recent kits and it's still not uh, using that type of idea, which is a shame, um, but it's nothing past what a normal modeler should be able to do is draw them out. Now we're moving on to uh, sprue I for this one. Uh, now you get some of your front engine cowlings, side engine cowlings, um, and some of the internal uh, panels and some of them start getting some of the external panels there. You can just make out the slight uh, stretch marks for the stretch canvas, which is quite a nice little added touch there. You can bring that out with a little bit of highlighting uh, and such when you're doing your painting. Uh, nice detail. You can see the doors on there. The louvers are punched open, so you don't have to clean them out and open them yourself. They are 
out the factory molded open, which is good to see. Uh, same on those smaller ones down the front there. It's so all in all, uh, again, no evidence of any problems with flash. Gates are slightly larger on these ones because they're slightly larger parts, but they're still thin. You haven't got a big, large, chunky area to deal with. So that's a good piece to do. Uh, now we start moving on to, these are the lower wing sections on this. Um, now what I have noticed with this one is that these wing parts are actually come in a top and a bottom piece, which the later wing nuts kits they've decided to mold them all as one piece. Uh, so I think this, this is one of their earlier kits uh, style of production. I don't know whether they did that for any main reason, but it's just different on this one. So as you can see, these two bits will be joined together. You get your wet rear claps at the end. Uh, you get your engine cover on there. You get two different variants on this sprue again. So as always, you've got to pay attention when you're building it to make sure you get the right ones. Uh, and then there's your rear wings, uh, rear flaps, which are connected at the back. If you wanted to do them adjusted, you could just have to cut that through. You can have adjustable. Moving on to the sprue F. Uh, again, this is now the, the top wings in two halves. These will be need to be glued and joined together. I wouldn't imagine that you'd have get you'd have uh, any real problems with this. You've got a nice vis visible area where you apply the glue around the ed edge and you get locator pins in the middle. Uh, and you can see these ones are spaced up to make sure you get the correct thickness. You don't squeeze them too tight. So all in all, again, very little evidence of any flash. Nicely molded. The, the rib detail, let's try and get that in the shot. And there you can see the rib detail on there. Very nice looking. Now, moving on to quite a busy sprue on this one. This is now sprue A. So this has a lot of the internal pieces. Uh, these are the different front radiators for the different variants. Again, you always got to keep paying attention to those instructions. Uh, you've got the machine gun ammo feeds there. I'm sure that's the fuel tank. You've got a padded seat. Very nicely done. Very nice texture on there. Nothing flattened, pretending to be leather. That's got little the little studs that you can highlight in there. Uh, put a nice little wash in there. That'll come out beautiful. You've got the internal uh, section, which is this is a canvas. And you can see all the stitching detail around there. And that can be easily be picked out with a bit of dry brushing. Uh, different types of pedals on there. Different types of controls. Uh, now that's your the two different uh, instrument panels which sit in front of the pilot. Uh, there's the main bucket for the seat. Uh, so all in all, uh, nicely molded again looking around on there no evidence of any flash or problems anywhere at all good quality control wing nuts now onto the last sprue now this has the main fuselage halves They don't have too much detail. There's a, there's a small seam that you've got to have to join at the bottom, which is the last piece that you have to, have to join. Um, it's slightly stepped, and there is then this ray... Of, I'm just trying to make sure I get this in shot. A very thin piece, which has got stitching. So you glue these two pieces together along the bottom, and then you glue this piece then along the bottom seam to then hide the join. So all you have to do is worry about when you're making this is a very small thin se section of join, which I'll be honest, this is actually drawing me towards World War One kits myself. The lack of seam lines and wing roots and fuselage half joins and um, rescribing needed. It, I love it. I do like the the slightly more modern aircraft, but that area. Um, had got me a little tired of trying to uh, fight them. So this is why I've started moving on to uh, doing some of these. Uh, and there you've got some of the internal bracing for where the pilot would sit and that was where the engine would be held on, on there. Uh, again, some more 
uh, spars, which would be for the front of the aircraft and it's sort of pilot for holding on the engines to the top of the wings. Uh, very nice. Again, now I did notice on this little piece here, this is the only time I've ever noticed a bit of weird flash and leakage from one of the ejector pin marks. So this is going to need a little bit more cleaning up on this part, but out of the whole kit, that's the only one small piece I've noticed. So extremely happy with that. That's what's inside the box with the plastic. So that's a go through and see what's in the Wingnut Wings Fokker DV7 early kit. So from the instructions, superb as always. Decals, top quality, cartograph, can't go wrong with them. Hopefully they lay down as good as they look. From to the plastic, as always, seems superb with Wingnut Wings. Uh, same with the, there's no slide molding on some of the little parts, but I think we can uh, allow them that, that small part. Definitely, definitely recommend this for a first kit, I think, to build going into the Wingnut Wings and World War One era, mainly due to the limited and small amount of uh, rigging in there. You don't have to worry about that too much. There's not a huge amount of wood that you're going to have to paint as well. And the only thing you have to re really contend with is decals. So as long as you, as long as you like decals, <laughs> you're onto a winner there. Uh, definitely recommended. And uh, you can get this for, I got this for uh, 90 pounds posted from Veterans Models. Um, highly recommended company to go deal with. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.